Hi everybody, on behalf of TechSoup, we'd like to thank you for joining our webinar today. TechSoup is a nonprofit 501c3 organization and our mission includes supporting nonprofits with technology to build a more equitable planet. And we do this by hosting a catalog of technology products specially priced for nonprofit organization. And one of those brands is Constant Contact. And Constant Contact, we have a special guest here with us today to provide you some insights on how to improve donor relations and drive actions with email marketing and social media tools. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm honored to be the webinar producer here at TechSoup. Before I introduce Amy, I would like to show you how you can engage if this is your first time here, you know you're already on mute, right? So we would like you to um, put your questions in the Q&A. I have the wrong slide. I'm glad I'm the webinar producer because I can edit this out. Put your questions in the Q&A. Um, feel free to ask your question in the chat. But Amy has some team members here that is going to provide you some answers in the Q&A. Um, we would love for you to follow up with Constant Contact after this. I'm going to introduce Amy. I love your bio, Amy. She's a partner success manager at Constant Contact, has over 11 years with Constant Contact. She's been on board member for multiple organizations, Habitat for Humanity, um, the Food Bank, and worked with various animal rescue organizations. So she understands how to drive donor relations and engagement through the top of mind marketing and appeals. So Amy, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Thank you, Aretha, and thank you very much for that warm welcome. Welcome, everybody. Really glad you're here on today's webinar. I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and just turn off. I'm going to present today, and while I'm presenting, I'm going to turn off my camera so I don't have to look at myself. So bear with me one moment while I go ahead and stop my video and get a screen share going. While we're waiting, please continue to, yes, love Constant Contact. Let us know where you're Zooming in from and what you have for breakfast. And if you already have Constant Contact, let us know in the chat room. Put a yes in the chat room or no in the chat room. Okay, thank you, Aretha. Again, welcome to today's webinar on Find, Build, and Grow. I first want to start by thanking TechSoup for allowing me to be here today with you and a special thanks to Aretha Simons who's coordinated this gathering today. And just a little bit about TechSoup, they have been a partner with Constant Contact since November of 2020. TechSoup currently has about approximately 500 nonprofit users uh, who use Constant Contact. And I believe somebody did raise their hand in the chat to say that they were a Constant Contact user. So if you're one of those users, I just wanna take a moment to say thank you for your business. We greatly appreciate that. And also you might learn today some things that you have available to you to you in your account that you don't know about. And if you're not a Constant Contact user, hopefully you'll hear something today that will let you see how using an email marketing platform can really help you drive donations and support to your nonprofit organization. This is a really exciting time of year for nonprofits. And by exciting, that can also mean really stressful. We've got some major fundraising holiday coming up, holidays coming up, which you well are well aware of. We've got Giving Tuesday. I'm here in Colorado, so I would like to just say hello to my brothers and sisters out there that are in the mountain time zone. Um, we have Colorado Gives Day, and I'll be honest with you, some of my nonprofit organizations, they don't even want me to give on Giving Tuesday. They want me to wait until Colorado Gives Day because there's a program here where they will double the donations. And I apologize, I don't know if your state has that. I hope it does. Um, and then there's the year-end contributions. You're trying to get those donations in for the end of the year for your organization. So I just wanna say, I know you're busy and I'm so glad that you're here sharing this space with us today. And thank you again, Aretha, for introducing me. So a little bit more, I have been with Constant Contact for 11 years. And I've worked that entire time with the partner team and I love working with the partners and I love working with organizations like TechSoup. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite childhood stories was Stone Soup. And when I had, when I was in a meeting one time with Dale and, and Allison, Dale actually shared with me that TechSoup was modeled after that Stone Soup, that child's book. Um, so I loved the concept of everybody gathering and bringing something to the table that we could share with one another. 
I mean, it doesn't really get more nonprofit than that. Um, so that's that's constant contact aiming. But the other thing that Aretha mentioned is there's nonprofit aiming. So I'm very involved with several nonprofits, Habitat for Humanity, Homeward Alliance, Canine Companions for Independence, World Hunger Foundation, Larimer County Humane Society. Um, one that I'm going to talk about a little bit today is the Wild Animal Sanctuary here in Colorado. Happily Ever Canine Rescue. If you are an animal rescue, uh, there is a good opportunity you're going to get me to volunteer for your organization. So let's talk about what our agenda looks like today to see more specifically what we're going to cover. I'm going to take you through three different platforms of marketing. I'm going to take you through email marketing, social media marketing, and SMS. And all of these tools are going to help you with finding donors and volunteers and sponsors. This can be done through our list building and list growth tools. You can share these tools in an email marketing platform and you can share them on your social media sites and you can actually share these tools that go beyond your inbox. You're a nonprofit. You're a nonprofit. So your purpose is a story. You've already got those contacts, but you need to build those relationships to deepen your loyalty. You can use these same tools to keep the story going. Tell people about changes in your organization, updates, success stories. People want to hear the successes and the needs. If you've got people that are dedicated to your nonprofit, they're in, they're, they're trudging with you. They want to know what you need as well. People who are loyal to your organization will stay loyal if you keep in front of them. So you obviously can't be in front of them all the time. Email marketing gives you a way to be in front of them. We're going to go over a little bit more of this in detail later. And the grow part of this presentation today is it's all about the growth. Donations, which come from donor growth, building up your volunteer base, and helping the communities that you serve, getting people from your community involved, getting their buy-in. The first thing we need to do is show you why you should use an email marketing strategy as one of the most effective ways, marketing channels. Email marketing should be at the center of your nonprofit's fundraising efforts, especially since 99% of email users check their email every day. And of those people, many of them are checking their emails several times a day. I'm guilty of that. But finding the right messaging to get donors to take action can be really challenging. You're a nonprofit organization. You have a lot on your plate. You wear a lot of different hats. I get this. Our mission today is to show you tools through a class through a cross platform marketing strategy that can help you achieve your nonprofit organization's goals. So this may or may not be actually a statistic that's surprising to you because as you know, everyone is in their email. You want to use email marketing just out of sheer usage and available people with whom you can connect. You're storytellers. Email marketing gives you the platform to tell your story. Also with email marketing, you can send targeted, relevant, segmented, and personalized messages that will help with the engagement of your email campaigns that you send out. And we're gonna talk a little bit more of each one of those in detail as we continue on. Segmentation is actually taking a front row seat in this webinar today. Why email marketing counts? Every contact matters. Ask yourself, how are you engaging with your contacts, your donors, your volunteers? Are you in front of them when they aren't in front of you? Again, you obviously can't be in front of everyone at all times. So email marketing is that way that you can connect with them. Are you connecting with them regularly to stay on top of, of their mind? These contacts, they're the front line of your email marketing strategy. You already are connected with them. You've already in some way got, have you have their interest in your nonprofit organization. I'm going to give you an example here. So one of those nonprofit organizations that I mentioned in nonprofit Amy Land was the Wild Animal Sanctuary. And it's here locally in Colorado. And I had a child. She, I still have a child. But when I moved here from California, she was quite young. And somebody said, oh, go to the Wild Animal Sanctuary. It's amazing. So what they do is they rescue animals from, um, like, I hate to say it, lions, tigers, and bears, wolves, 
elephants, other animals from pretty horrific situations. And they put them in uh, a natural environment where they can live and thrive and grow and flourish. And it's this really cool walkway that's above their natural habitat that you walk around with. And I went there and I thought, wow, this is, this is the kind of organization I need to get next to. So I went in and I provided my email, my email address to them so I could get on their email list. And when they sent, started sending me their email campaigns, I connected that with them on social media. So I received their emails. I have their social media posts in front of me. And then there's different communications that they send. For example, you can sponsor an animal as a gift for someone. And if you're like me, you may have some family members that have everything. But if you're giving them a meaningful gift, like sponsoring an animal, so it's a great way. This is a great way through that one visit that I have connected with this organization. So email marketing, your time and your money is important. Email marketing is a great way to get a return of a very effective return of investment on your money spent. Statistics show that you're going to get 30 dollars in return for every dollar spent. Your money is important and it's needed elsewhere. So you can get a really effective marketing tool that's going to give you a really powerful investment. So this this statistic, I want to start by saying that email marketing is 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter combined. In and of itself, yes, but we're going to talk about using this in email marketing in conjunction with social media marketing. But why is email so effective? Well, with email, again, you've got these contacts. They're, you have their information. You have their email address. You may know something about them. You, you can add personalization to the email. You can send targeted emails through segmentation. There's that word again that we're going to talk about more in detail. So when email marketing is done right, such as segmentation, um, you can track your success in real time. So it's important to have those analytics. So when you're spending money on something, you want to see how well it's reporting for you. We give you easy to understand reporting and you can see who's engaging and who isn't. So this gets to be where you can, again, see who's getting engaged with your email campaigns. Those are people who are connected. You're going to want to tailor that, mar uh, that email marketing message different than someone who's not engaging. Um, what are they clicking on? We'll let you know what links they're clicking on. So not only are you going to see who's opening your email campaigns, you're going to see who's clicking on your email campaigns and what links they're clicking on. Another reason to do email marketing is because it gives you the ability to build credibility with your customers and your donors and your supporters and your volunteers. So people will support nonprofit organizations with people they know, like, and trust. Email gives you the ability to build that credibility with your audience by sharing helpful and informative content. And for a nonprofit organization, your story. Now that you understand why email marketing is so effective and important, let's look at the tool itself. You can create beautiful email templates in very little time. If you're a Constant Contact user, you can probably give me a thumbs up on this. Constant Contact provides hundreds of templates and simple tools. Time is really important too. We get that, we understand that. So we've provided a really intuitive, user-friendly interface. So let's take a look at that. What I'm showing you here is an actual template that's in our template picker and the builder, the tool that you use to craft your email campaign. So these tools, these campaigns are all mobile responsive. So in other words, what it looks like here to the right, this is what it's gonna look like on somebody's desktop. But we give you the ability to see what it's gonna look like on a mobile device. So this will automatically stack fit to screen for a mobile device. So it gives very professional mobile rendering and people can just scroll through to see your message. A couple of things I wanted to uh, make mention of here. You're gonna see at the bottom, there's these social blocks. So these different types of blocks, you can bring over a text block, an image block, a button block. This kind of provider here is a button block. So you just really wanna know that this is your palette and these are your tools to build out what you wanna, what you wanna create, the message that you wanna send. All you have to do is, is uh, put in your content. So here at the bottom, there's two sets of social 
uh, buttons. This first set here, this is called your social share button. So when your contact is in your email campaign, this gives them the ability to share your newsletter campaign, your marketing campaign, your donation campaign, your volunteer request on their social media site. Now, why is this important? Well, you know, if I'm getting an email from a nonprofit organization, I probably have a lot of people that I'm connected with on social media that are also volunteers of a nonprofit profit organization. They're all supporters. And they, I might intrigue someone on my social media site to share your message. The second set of buttons is what we call social follow. And this allows people to connect with you on your social media site. So a couple of things to keep in mind here is we definitely want you to use these buttons, but don't use the social media button just because you happen to have a social media site. So for example, if you're not on Twitter and you're not actively tweeting or responding to tweets, then you probably don't want to put your Twitter button in here because there's nothing worse than feeling unheard. So you just want to make sure that you're putting all of the, the social media sites that you're active with. We're going to talk a little bit later when, we, when I go into social media marketing, how you can be more engaged on your site, but just that's kind of a tip to, to think about. The other thing that I want to show you here is this button, this sign up to volunteer. So this can take people to a landing page where they can sign up. So again, if I'm sharing this email campaign, it's going to give people who are not on your email list the ability to sign up to volunteer. So those are really great tools. The last thing I want to mention here is I've talked to you a lot about segmentation. So one of the things that's really important to do in the body of an email campaign is add links. So you can add links to text, you can add links to images, anything. Links are going to get your contact to engage with your email marketing um, campaign. So anything that you make a clickable link, you can also automatically map to a list. So for example, if I have sign up to volunteer and somebody clicks on this link, not only are you going to get the reporting that shows who clicked on this link, but the system will actually do the segmenting for you. It will actually move those contacts to a volunteer list or any other list that you establish. Same thing with any text or any image. So click segmentation is a tool within the Constant Contacts platform that allows you to easily, not you, excuse me, that allows your contacts to easily segment themselves into the interest that they want to receive communication on. So on to content. Communication should be driven around these questions. And these are some pretty, these are some pretty fluid questions. But in order to be able to answer these questions, you need to have some sort of platform that will provide you this information. So we provide an affordable, robust email marketing platform that provides you those analytics and segmenting tools and list growth tools that allows you to capture this very important information about your donors. So let's look a look at this a little bit more in detail. Okay, segmenting your mailings is critical in today's environment. So you may recall when email marketing first came out, it was just like you blasted everybody about everything. And that worked for a while, but those days are long gone. Your contacts are busy too. Think about your own inbox. How many emails do you walk into in the morning? 30, 50, 100? It's, it's pretty daunting. So you wanna be respectful of your donors and your volunteers' time. You wanna know your nonprofit audience. What do you know about the people on your contact list? This might seem like a daunting question, but you likely have more information than you think. And for every piece of information you have about your audience, the more effectively you can communicate with them. Have they donated, volunteered, or attended an event in the past? If the answer is yes, you should have segments in place for each of those things. Reaching out to existing supporters with the same message you use for prospective donors can be ineffective. 
maybe even offensive. Like, why am I getting, I give you money regularly. Why are you treating me like you don't even know who I am? Similarly, emailing your volunteers with donor language can make it seem like their time and energy is less important than monetary donations. And you know, that's just not true. I'm gonna give you like a little story about that. So um, my sister-in-law, who, who's my best friend, my brother stole her away from me, but not really. I think she still likes me better, but that's a whole nother topic. So she lives in New York in the Hudson Valley and she's very involved with Canine Companions for Independence. And she does a lot of local fundraising events. She's basically the face of the Hudson Valley Canine Companions for Independence, Cara Dorsey. I can't be there to help or volunteer as much as I would love to, but I can donate to their cause. I can give my monetary contributions. I can connect with them on social media. But, con but Canine Companion for Independence also does email marketing. So if I were to keep getting emails from them to volunteer, I'm gonna feel like they don't know me because I'm not a volunteer, I'm a donor. Also think about whether or not your contacts have engaged with any of your other emails. A yes is a great indicator of interest. What you're doing is working with those recipients, but if a contact is, or a, or a consistent segment of your contact list isn't opening or clicking on your emails, then it may be time to pull those recipients aside and test out a new messaging tactic for them. So take a look at what they've clicked on in your email. For people who have engaged, the more you know about what they engage with, the better. So for example, we give you those tools. We give you those segmenting tools that I've mentioned. We give you the analytics. We give you the click-through rate so that you can see how many people and who is clicking on those specific links. That, that information is available to you. What do we know about them personally? When you ask supporters to opt into communication, what do you ask? Of course, you're gonna ask for their name and their email address, that goes a long way. But taking the opportunity to ask for other meaningful questions like, what type of support you're interested in providing? What sorts of topics would you like to be updated on? And even when their birthday is, we have a tool where you can send an automated birthday email that really connects with them and shows that you care. All of this can give you information that helps you personalize their communication and make them more relevant, timely, and effective. The one thing I'll mention about this though is sometimes less is more. I don't know if you've ever signed up for an email list and they're asking for basically everything, including your firstborn's name. And you're like, I don't know, this seems a little bit weird. So again, get what you need and need what you get. You can always get that information later. This is about continuing your story. Be clear with what you are trying to raise. If you don't have a specific target amount, if you don't let people know the goal that you're trying to achieve, then they're just basically shooting arrows at, at a target that isn't that they can't see. You want to be specific with your time frame. You want to let them know, like, hey, time is of the essence. This is how long we have. Hey, Giving Tuesday is coming up. Hey, Colorado Gives Day, wait, do your donations then because we're going to be able to double our contributions. Hey, year-end donations, time is of the essence. Your emailing will become more frequent the closer you get to the target date. So you really want to balance this out. You don't want to be bombarding people with emails because probably what's going to happen is they're going to unsubscribe, but they're on board with you. These are people that have connected with you. They are engaged in your nonprofit organization. So that sense of urgency and those more frequent emails when you get closer to that target date, that makes sense. They're going to expect that. Purpose. Set clear expectations for the money and resources you're asking for. What will these funds be used for? The more specific you can be about how the money will be spent, the more your audience can clearly understand your needs. So don't just say, hey, we need, you know, $500,000. We need $500,000. We have, you know, 200 homeless, homeless families in our community. This money is going to provide 80 meals for 200 families. You just want to be really specific on the purpose. Again, segmentation. Pull the people out who have already donated. Make theirs different. You don't want to keep sending, hey, give, hey, give, hey, give to people that have already given. It's going to make them feel like you don't, that you don't understand that they, they're already in the game. However, I am connected with a, uh, again, happily ever canine. They rescue dogs out of um, 
kill shelters throughout the country and they bring them to Colorado because we're dog freaks. And um, this friend of mine uses social media to do fundraising. And I may give like, ah, it's a little tight. You know, I'm going to give you a little money and, and maybe I could go deeper in my pockets. But then, you know, a week later, she's saying, hey, we're still far off the goal for this dog to get the surgery he needs so that he can be adoptable. And it's like, you know, maybe that extra 20 bucks that I held on to, I'm going to throw it in there. I can see how close she is to her, the goal of, of meeting that dog's needs. Another way um, to do this is a goal thermometer or some sort of visual as to where you are. It's a really good motivator for people who have and have not donated. Um, provide ongoing stories of success and impact. So it's really important that you don't just get something out there that talks about like what your, what your needs are and what you're gonna use the money for. Say, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we can do. Here we are loading up the trucks with, with food. Images tell a story. Words tell a story. There's lots of different ways you can still tell a story. You know, the story doesn't end, however, when the fundraising campaign is over. Again, once your goals have been met or the campaign is over, I just mentioned the, um, these are some actual comments from donors. And I have a little experience with this. So some of the comments, I feel like my gift didn't matter. Again, that meter in progress bar, like when I gave that extra 20 bucks, I could see how much closer we were to his cross's goal of getting that surgery he needs. No one told me how they used the money. Well, yep, the goal-based campaigns tell them up front, and that's really important. But again, keep in communication, share the success journey along the way. Give them real-time stories of how their money, their donation has made an impact. Or the organization didn't share their impact. Once it was done, it's like, well, did we hit the goal? Did, were, did we feed families? Did the dog get their surgery? So it's really important that you actually thank people, tell them what their impact made. This is so important. Sometimes we can be focused on the need to raise the money, the need to get the volunteers that we forget to stop and thank the people afterwards. I had a nonprofit organization that I was very heavily involved with. I, I did volunteer work and I submit, I gave them a significant amount of um, my limited uh, donation money. And I also reached out to my friends that were able-bodied and, and had them come do uh, you know, volunteer work. And then other friends who weren't able-bodied they'd send donations, but everybody was like, well, did they get the donation or what did they do? What's going on? Even the people that volunteered felt like, you know, we're here, but, you know, are we making a difference? And sadly, um, you know, the donation stopped and the volunteers started leaving. So definitely this is a really critical piece here. So we've talked about knowing your audience, making sure you have targeted relevant emails landing in your contacts inbox. This next area talks about subject lines. Why subject lines? Again, getting back to your inbox because you have, you open your inbox in the morning and it's a little daunting. So you want to put effort into that subject line. 47% of people will determine whether they open your email based on the subject line, no matter how good the content is. So have a familiar from name. Do they know you or do they know your nonprofit organization? Do they know Amy or do they know a happily ever after canine? Keep it short, no more than to four to seven words. Another reason you wanna do this is not to be, just to be respectful of people's time. Well, a lot of the email clients will truncate a subject line and you're thinking you're getting a really great messaging out there and they're only seeing the first four to seven words. Make it descriptive, make sure that they understand what they're gonna see, what they're gonna learn, what, they're, what their outcome is expected when they actually read your email campaign. And these next two things are just to kind of steer you away from getting uh, your emails caught in someone's junk or spam folder. So writing in all caps or excessive use of punctuation, not only do those look unprofessional, but that's also a great way to get your email campaign in someone's junk mail. A couple other things with the subject lines, again, keeping in mind that 47% of people are going to be determining whether they're even going to open your email campaign. Emojis, emojis are a great eye catcher. Um, using a subject in a pre-header, getting back to that subject line being four to seven words. 
so you may be not able to get your full message in, it's hard. So the pre-header is like a secondary subject line. So for example, your subject line might be time is running out. And then the pre-header could be the community pantry needs food. So it's a secondary subject line that drives home the message that you're trying to send. A couple other things that help with subject lines, question, will you help fight hunger? Alliteration is something that's really effective too. Support senior services, chunking it, getting your message into different chunks, connect, refer, and join. List, five ways you can make a difference. I probably have time to find out five ways that I can make a difference. I don't have time to find out 40 ways I can make a difference, but five ways to make a difference that I can handle. Again, sense of urgency, webinar is tomorrow. And personalization, adding personalization to a subject line means that your email campaign is 22% more likely to be open. We have a tool that allows you to add that personalization. Allison, we need your help. Allison's thinking, wow, at some point, not only have they spelled my name correctly, but I must have given it to them. The other thing is to keep it simple. So, the, so you've got your subject line, you've got your targeted audience, and you want people to engage in your email campaign. So if they open your email campaign and they see a lengthy email, they are gonna be like, nope, I don't have time for that. Keep it simple. Three images or less, including your logo. The other thing is, do you have that friend that went to Aruba and they have 85, um, 85 of their vacation photos posted on Facebook? And you're like, oh, this is beautiful. And you click through for the, about the first 20 of them. And you're like, I am not gonna keep clicking through these images. Well, your email campaign is the same. You want to share the good news about your event. Images are a great way to do that. Don't overwhelm people. Again, getting back to that clicking, always link your images. Never use 100% image. That's another way that your email campaigns get, can, that can get caught in a spam filter. I'm just going to take a quick water break. Hang on for me one second. Thank you. Okay, so again, why do we want to make these images a clickable link? Well, again, it's a really great way to get people to engage in your email campaign. Statistics find that there is a 650% higher click rate for emails that include images. GIFs are also like this click right here is a GIF. It's pretty engaging. So if you have animated images, those are great to involve. Those are great to include in your email campaign as well. Another tool is uh, the Constant Contact mobile app. So our editor, and some of you who may have used Constant Contact may not even be aware of this because it, didn't, oh, it wasn't always this way. But our editor is a cross-platform editor, which means your, the website and the app talk to each other. So if you're working at your desk, which for me is my living room with my, my uh, rescue dog and my rescue cat by my side, if you start your email campaign on your computer and then you have to go pick up your child from school or your grandchild is sick and you have to go get them from school or you have a doctor's appointment and you know you're gonna have an hour to wait before you actually see somebody, you can actually log off, you can grab your phone and while you're sitting there waiting for your child or waiting for your grandchild or waiting for your doctor, you can actually continue on with your email marketing campaign. The app also has the same social tools that we're going to talk about, and it also has the same reporting analytics. So the app is a great way to go. So in the body of the email, we talked about personalization, but uh, excuse me, when in the subject line, we talked about personalization and the impact that it can have. But in the body of an email, personalizing your contact content is already is also very effective. So for example, any piece of information I have attached to a contact record can be inserted into the body of an email campaign. So for example, if I've had a recent event and TechSoup has been there and constant contact has been there, I can send the same email, but when it arrives in Aretha's inbox, it's gonna say, dear Aretha, we want to say thank you to you and TechSoup for sponsoring our event. And when it comes to my email, my inbox, it's going to say, dear Amy, we want to thank you and Constant Contact for sponsoring our event. So personalizing content is a really great way to get people to engage with you. 
click segmentation. We've talked a lot about that. That gives you the ability to have segments, contact segment themselves into categories that interest them. Subject line and pre-header recommendation. If you're sitting there and you're like, I'm not a marketer, I have no idea what you're using a subject line in a pre-header. We have a tool built into the system that will say that you can click and it'll give you some recommendations. Video, video is another great way to share your story. We've talked about words. We've talked about images. We've talked about even animated images. Videos are very engaging. They do have to be web hosted. We do have a video block that you can drag over on the Constant Contact Editor. So please, <clears throat> if you have web hosted videos, that is gonna completely uh, improve and enhance your engagement. We also have A-B testing. So you can send out 20% of your email at subject line A, 20% at subject line B, and then you can send the rest of the 60% out based on which one got the better results. Um, we've already talked about adding social media pages and the sharing capability. You definitely wanna do that to engage. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is events. So in the body of an email, um, Events. Constant Contact has an event tool where you can actually create an online registration page that allows people to sign up to volunteer or even sponsor an upcoming event. The, re the, the registration form, since it's online, it has its own unique URL. So you can send that out in the body of an email campaign. You can post it on your social media sites. So we have the Constant Contact event tool, and we also have an integration with Eventbrite. So some nonprofit organizations already have this platform available to them. So if you do, you definitely want to make sure that you connect your constant, your, your constant contact account with your event right. It will automatically bring over your contacts from your events and it will bring them into your constant contact account. So these integrations can actually do the tools, can do some of the lifting for you as well. So this gets back to not only knowing how your marketing budget is working for you, but more importantly, what are the types of campaigns that are effective and have generated the most engagement and the most results? You wanna track your success. What are some of the things that we give you? Well, we tell you who's opening your emails. We tell you who's clicking on your links. We also give you a heat map of the most popular links in your email campaign. Bounces, those are emails that don't make it to somebody. Why did these emails bounce? Unsubscribes and spam complaints. So we are automatically compliant with can spam. We also help you with Castle and GDPR, um, some of the other regulatory agencies that make you comply with email marketing. So if you have somebody that marks you as spam or unsubscribes, that contact will no longer be able to be added into you. Even if you bring them in via an integration or um, a list, the system will say, nope, this person has opted out. We also give you the did not opens. And why might that be so important? Well, you can save these people to their own list and try and engage with them in a different way. So how do you use the reporting? Click segmentation, we covered that on the slide with the editor. So not only do you have the reporting that tells you who clicked on what link, with click segmentation, you can also automatically have contact segments themselves. You also have the ability to build custom segments based on a contact activity. So for example, you can build a segment of someone, of, of a group of people who have not opened any of your last emails or uh, a group of people who have opened your last five emails. Those people are very engaged. So these tactics are going to help you make the most of your marketing efforts. You want to give people the opportunity to join your list. You want them, you already have some contacts, but you want to grow that contact list. You want to give them the ability to hear from you. So these list growth tools are going to give you the ability to grow your contact list. So we have a lot of different tools available to you. The first set of tools is available to you to post on your website. So we have an inline form, we have a pop-up form, we have a flyout banner. We have a, a banner that is hard coded at the top of your of your campaign, or excuse me, of your website. So all of these list growth tools are available to you in your constant contact account. And then once you activate these list growth tools, we give you the code necessary for you to host on your website or provide to your webmaster. The other type of tool that we have are landing pages, and landing pages are a great tool 
because you can create a simple landing page and capture the information you want. Maybe just, again, not email and name, but here's where you can ask for their phone number, their birthday. The more information you have, the better you're gonna be able to segment the, the mailings. One thing to note though here is again, you can ask for more information later. The thing that's really great about landing pages is you're actually generating, instead of code, HTML code, that you're putting on a website, you're generating a URL and you can do a lot of things with the URL. You can put them in the body of an email, you can post them on your social media sites, or you can even take it to a QR code builder where you can generate, um, where you can generate a QR code and then you can host that on your social media sites. You can host it if you have an event, you can host it on a table at the event. I know some people that create the QR and they put it on their phone. And then if they need somebody, they can just go ahead and say, here, scan this and you can join my list. So there's lots of ways that you can add contacts. So the sign up form, we have apps, we have what's called the list builder app. Again, this is found on the app store and you can download it to your phone. So if you're out and about, you can also just ask somebody for their contact information. It also, if you're the type of event that people have business cards, you can also scan a business card. We, Constant Contact also has an open API. So you can sync uh, Constant Contact with your CRM. Very simply, you can just type and paste in contact. Most people upload contacts from a file or a spreadsheet. Um, and we also have other integrations, like for example, Gmail. You can connect your Gmail account. Some of you nonprofit organizations may have the donor platform um, as your CRM. You can integrate Donor Perfect as well. And then if you want to get on social media sites to try and generate more leads, you have the ability to bring in leads from social media as well directly into Constant Contact. Now we're going to go on to social media marketing. Social media marketing allows you to extend your reach beyond your contact list. Some people are more engaged in social media than they are via email communication. So this is just one more channel where you can connect with people. What I'm showing you here is what's called a social post. Now you may remember when we were talking about email, those social follow buttons. And I said, well, you know, Put the ones that you use, but don't put them just because you have them. We want you to be engaged in social media. So some people just don't have the time or they don't have the know-how, but you can actually connect your social media accounts with constant contact and you can do your posting all from one place, right in your constant contact account. So once you connect your social media, you can create your posts. You can not only create your posts, you can bring in images and it shows you over here on the right, cute little hedgehog. So you put your messaging, you put your image and then boom, you schedule your posts and it goes out to all of your social media platforms. In addition, you're gonna see something really cool here called create variations. But different social media platforms have different benefits. Twitter, you need to be very concise in your messaging. Um, you can use hashtags, LinkedIn, you can use hashtags. You can link to other businesses. So you might want variations in how your message is going to look across the different social media channels. We give you the ability to do that. Also, we give you some analytics. Who's, what's, what's the reach? What's the engagement? Again, you want to see how well these tools are working for you. So Constant Contact, in addition to the social inbox tools, we also have what's called, well, it's also attached to social inbox, but basically Facebook and Instagram also will automatically feed messages back to your constant contact account. So again, you can respond to those messages directly in constant contact. You don't have to link, log into your social media platforms to respond to these messages. So it gives you one place where you can post your messages to all your social media accounts. You can be active in all of them and you can even respond to social media messaging on Facebook and Instagram. What are some other things that you might wanna share on social posts? The most important goal for your social media is to drive action. This is your ultimate goal because this is how you grow your nonprofit and your donations. By driving traffic to your website, getting registrants, registrations for events, 
growing your email list and more. So here are some of the things that you can post through your social inbox. You can share a link to a sign up form, again, that landing page. So that's a great way to get people to sign up your mailing list on your social media sites. You can promote an event. You can link your donations page to your website. And you can ask for volunteers and sponsors. Social media extends your reach beyond your contacts. I highly encourage you if you're not using social media marketing to do it because even though it can seem a little daunting, it's just a great way to get your reach beyond the inbox. And if you're doing something like posting your landing page, your sign up form, that's giving you uh, a tool that you can ask people to join and become a contact. Um, so constant contacts, basically these social media tools, they're all gonna save you time while accomplishing these goals, these social media marketing goals that you have. You're gonna be able to get the word out about your nonprofit and you can also share your constant contact campaigns too. So let's take a look at that. So this should look a little familiar. This is when you send an email campaign, this is your reporting. So you're gonna notice this blue button. So if you click that blue button, once a campaign is scheduled to go or it's sent, you won't see this if it's in draft status, it opens up this very familiar looking uh, post area. And here it's gonna automatically connect that newsletter and you can select a social media site, create those variations and boom, post your newsletter. Now, one of the things that's really interesting here is that, because you may ask, why am I adding a landing page in the body of an email when somebody's already on my mailing list? It's because if they share it on their social media sites or you're sharing your newsletter on your social media sites, you're extending your reach. You're giving other people the opportunity to become a contact. The last marketing tool we're going to talk about is SMS. We are very excited to be introducing SMS to our marketing menu. It was a big ask for a long time. This method of communication allows you to have an immediate impact and communication with your contacts. So a few statistics about SMS. Think, you know this yourself. Think of businesses that you have signed up for, like what comes to mind for me is we have a coffee, uh, a, a coffee company here. And I signed up for SMS because there's days where I get double points. There's days where I go and get one. There's days where if I drag in my rescue mutt, she'll get a cappuccino. So if you're signing up for messages, these are people that want to engage with you. Also, your contacts cost money. So you want to retain them. Also, if you recall, and we're going to visit this once more, each channel, whether it's email marketing, social media marketing, or SMS, has its benefits. But when you use these in conjunction with one another, you're going to have a lot of positive impacts. You're going to have people that want to do business with your nonprofit organization. You're going to have people that stay connected, and you're going to have people that want to share your message. So SMS, again, you want to know how your tools are working for you. So you get the same analytics that you do with email marketing. You'll find out who's opening, who's clicking on any link. This also gives you some subscriber growth. So um, there are analytics that come along with it. There's a lot of other things with SMS. And again, this is new. And SMS has its own rules around compliance. And one of the things if you decide to opt in for SMS is there is a wait period. So you have to actually enroll. And it takes about 24 hours for our texting company to verify the validity of your organization. And then you're ready to go with text messaging. Um, you get a dedicated phone number for support. So if you need any help, you can give us a call. It's a very simple message editor. So the messaging is gonna look very much like the messaging in your email campaign. Again, the detailed reporting, the list growth in the opt-in tools. And, um, there's quiet hours here. So we've got you covered for that. Our, during this texting quiet hours, you're actually not even able to send out text messages. Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about, well, almost lastly, um, we're gonna talk about harnessing the strength of each channel. We've gone over email marketing, social media marketing, and the SMS. 
And SMS is just another channel to add to your marketing mix, but it's not about using SMS or email marketing or social media in and of themselves. It's about using them together. So when you combine these marketing platforms, um, you're actually connecting with people in the channels that they prefer. So there are times when using one channel over the other is gonna be more appropriate and times when they can be used together. So let's look at these in detail. Social media, you're gonna use that when you wanna get beyond your inbox, beyond your email contacts and beyond your SMS contacts. You're looking to increase your engagement so that you can reach a new audience. You're doing this publicly. Your messaging is going to the public. Email, you want to use email when you need to reach your audience directly. You have a more robust message. You're going to be using targeted segmenting mailings. SMS, you're going to use SMS when you have something that is time sensitive um, or something that offers something exclusive and it can be handled in a short message. Usually with nonprofit organizations, an SMS is going to be something like maybe some messaging to some volunteers or a last minute message to donation effort. It's something where you really need an, an immediate sense of urgency. Just some other tools to cover with you. Um, we do have integrations outside of the ones that we've discussed. Constant Contact also does offer some services that I'll mention. Um, we do have support. Yep, that is right, support, live people. And we have best in class with deliverability because honestly, if your email has the best subject line and the best content and it's relevant and targeted and segmented and your email campaign is full of rich content, it still needs to land in their inbox. We have 97% deliverability. We have a team of mail operations people that are dedicated to making sure that your emails get in someone's inbox. So integrations, we already talked a little bit about Facebook, we talked about the event integration, but again, <clears throat> we have other integrations that use the nonprofit platform like Donor Perfect. but I also wanna mention Canva. I don't know if any of you are Canva users, but Canva is a great tool and there is a free platform that produces beautiful images and we also directly in, uh, integrate with Canva. So again, your story can be told using words, images, video. Canva gives you the ability to create unbelievable professional looking images that tell your nonprofit story. And you can automatically post those over to your Constant Contact account. If you're feeling like, wow, this makes sense and I wanna do this, but there's no way, we do have a nonprofit marketing services so one option available is something from as simple as a $79 camp branded professionally designed campaign design to full menu personal marketer. You know your budget, you know what your you know what you can and can't do. It's a service that we provide. Award-winning customer service. And this is pretty huge because again, it's not just customer service, it's award-winning. We've won we've won lots of TV awards for our customer service. There is like a lot that you have to go through to get to a person, but consistently when I'm talking to customers, partners, nonprofit organizations, they're like, wow, I cannot believe how helpful this person was. Um, so it's one of the things that Constant Contact really prides itself in is hiring really great people, training them to do a good job for you. Um, we also have live chat. So I don't know if you've ever had to chat with your telephone company, but it's really frustrating because they're like, what do you need? And then they think they know what you need, but they don't. So you can also chat and you can get a live person as well. We also have KB articles, it stands for knowledge base. Um, so again, people learn differently. If you're somebody that wants to pick up the phone and call us, we provide that. If you don't want to talk to people, just want to have a quick chat with somebody, you can do chat. If you're like, nope, I need to see the instructions in front of me, I'm definitely a visual person, you can go to the KB article. We have lots of different ways to make you successful. Sorry about that. Um, so we're to the questions part of the presentation today. Um, before I get to the questions, I just wanna go ahead and let you know that with TechSoup, when you sign up with Constant Contact, you do get 50% off monthly. That QR code is a QR code to the landing page. So that'll get you started. 
So I just wanted to make sure that you had that tool. And without and uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Aretha. Excellent. I think Heather has answered all the questions, and you have another oh. teammate, um, Thomas, here. Heather, um, you want to jump on? We brought in the heavy hitters. Thank you, Thomas mm -hmm. and Heather. Thomas is actually a coworker of mine. Heather is like is I bow to Heather and Thomas, and they're they're I'm very blessed to be a part of such an amazing team. So thank you both for being here today. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for the presentation. Yeah, I think we got to all the questions. Um, there is one that just popped up. Um, what if you're already a Constant Contact member? Can you get the discount? Um, I think with this particular um, setup, let us get back to you, Charlotte. Um, let us get back to you because there was another question in the, if you can send us your email address, um, that would be helpful. Yeah, so to further answer that question too, the way that it works with TechSoup is they have like a hub. As, as Aretha mentioned, they're, they're like this melting pot of, of technology for nonprofit organizations. And you go to that landing page and you like pay into this um, th this fee to pay into the text to have available to the TechSoup pot of technology. And then through that, once they have verified that you've paid into that, then you have access to that 50% that off. So even if you're an existing customer, we can get you those discounts. There's a few, you know, technicalities, like we need to make sure that you, you've paid into the TechSoup um, administrative fee and that you're not affiliated with any um, other partnership on the back end. But we, we definitely want to give you every benefit available. Awesome, and I do see a question. Yes, you're gonna receive um, the email and the video slides and will the attendees receive the info about the TechSoup? You can go right to TechSoup's website right now and in the search box type in constant contact and that page will come up as well. Any other questions, comments, um, feedback from Heather, Thomas, Amy? I think there was just one quick thing on Canva, um, which it sounds like Canva Pro version is available for nonprofits if you apply through Canva. Um, I didn't know that, I learned that. So we have a great integration. Um, so thanks Terry for um, highlighting that. Thank um, you, Terry. And then the you so Michael did ask about text messaging. I know Thomas got back to uh, Michael, but the for text messaging and SMS marketing, it is in the U.S. at the moment. Uh, we are looking at expanding possibly in 2023, but that's on the roadmap, um, and don't want to make any promises. Uh, but that should be definitely coming soon. And my apologies, I should have definitely mentioned that. For right now, it is U.S. only. And all of the tools that we talked about today, and there is. Um, you do have the ability to see what that 50% off pricing looks like. And there's also um, there's also two different plans with Constant Contact. There's a core plan and then there's a plus plan. So a lot of the tools, many of the tools, including the social media integrations come with a core plan. And um, the, the plus plan has some additional features. Like for example, it has automation that I didn't even go over with you today. So um, I definitely encourage you to at least look at the plans. The only thing that's additional is uh, SMS. SMS is a standalone product. So all of the things outside of the SMS would be included um, either if you have the core plan, what items are included in the core plan or the uh, plus plan. So just wanted to make that differentiation as well. And I did awesome. see that the, there was a 404 on that bit.ly link. So I yes. just shared the long link. Uh, so that one should not give you a 404. I'm not sure what happened, but <laughs> <laughs> there you go with that link. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much, Amy. What a great present. I can't wait to do another webinar with Constant Contact. You Aww, guys are amazing. Thank you, Aretha. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody, and make sure you're taking care of yourself as you're taking care of everybody else.